in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed a coronation service was held in heaven and in that coronation service a name was given to him Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 down to 10 the Bible says wherefore on account of this humility and this sacrifice God hath so highly exalted him verse 9 and given him a name a name that is above every other name above every other name and then the bible says verse 10 that at the name of jesus that means the name is not jesus no i know you call jesus you are just saying jesus is the owner of that name that was given the name is not jesus jesus was the name he was given when he was born there are footballers today called jesus <laughs> that every knee should bow of things in heaven in earth and under the earth verse 11 it says and every tongue should confess that that jesus who became the christ when the holy ghost came upon him has now become lord that's the name notice the progression jesus he became the christ when the holy ghost came upon him and now when he completed the sacrifice of redemption, the name is Lord. Lord means absolute owner. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord. Whoever has that name is the owner of the earth. There are four things that are there. Give us Psalm 24 and verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness is the Lord's. The world is and they that dwell therein all of them they belong to him now when jesus resurrected and that coronation service was done he quickly came back to earth and they saw him isn't it amazing that the first person who saw the resurrected christ was a woman this is why women are gates in the realm of the spirit the first person to see the resurrected christ was a woman he said take that message go and tell the disciples and then jesus made a very interesting statement he said all authority by reason of resurrection all authority has been given unto me matthew chapter 28 now all authority has been given unto me verse 18 matthew 28 and verse 18 all power well it says authority power but the word there is authority that is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 it says go therefore now you your celebration of easter and the resurrection does not end with your awareness that you are justified there is a mandate attached to it go therefore please give it to us verse 19 and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit 20 the bible says teaching them to observe all these things i have commanded you and whilst you do this be assured that i am with you even to the end of the age do you know that without the resurrection there is no christianity the resurrection proved the lordship it proved once again and finally so that jesus christ give us romans i believe romans chapter 1 and verse 4 romans chapter 1 and verse 4 the bible talks about the implication of the resurrection that he was declared 
to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead so he's resurrecting from the dead prove once and for all that this is the son of God we would have the basis to argue prophets perform miracles the disciples perform miracles but now Jesus resurrected from the dead as the son of the living God the new and living way the mediator even of the new covenant Romans chapter 4 and verse 25 tells us one of the benefits and the significance of the resurrection the Bible says he was delivered for our offenses and he was raised again for our justification being justified means being declared not guilty that the price and the penalty has been paid are we together yes so today we have confidence to stand in faith today we have confidence to celebrate many things one that there is access to become the righteousness of God access to become partakers of his life once again Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the Lord the Bible says being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith that seal of redemption now we have access to the Holy Spirit and then we have access to dominion sovereign control once again we are not weak people under the situations the, under the, the influence of situations and circumstances our dominion has been restored this will remain theory until you believe this truth what then is the gospel of salvation please look up what is the gospel of salvation because the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. What then is the gospel of salvation? Listen carefully. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the Father's love. The revelation of the Father's love. Demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The object of that sacrifice is the entire creation but man being his central focus he didn't die for man alone he died for the entire creation he reconciled creation to himself to the end that whoever believes his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension that that person should not perish but now become a partaker of his life so when we preach this glorious gospel we are not just recruiting members to a church listen there is a mandate that the whole world must know that he arose and that today he reigns and the bible says the same way it gives us a blessed hope that if jesus rose up from the dead and death did not have power over him that one day everybody who has died in Christ let me bring a word of hope for you everybody you know who left you and died in Christ there will be a resurrection where the dead in Christ will arise the Bible says and we who are alive will be caught up with him in the air there are seven pillars one day we'll discuss it maybe not tonight seven pillars of the Christian faith seven of them the last of them is the blessed hope of the resurrection. Christianity is not complete if we do not believe in the resurrection. Both of Jesus Christ and in the fact that one day, all together, we will experience that glorious experience. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And live in your spirit till your work on earth is done. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And live in your spirit till your work on earth is done. 
gospel of salvation no matter what you preach no matter what rema you bring the foundation for the believers justification is that Jesus Christ the son of the living God left heaven came and walked upon the earth became seen died and was buried and according to the authority of scripture the Bible says on the third day he rose again today he is seated in the right hand of the father that position of authority still continuing his priestly ministry making intercession for the saints what is the intercessory ministry like he says father i've been there i understand i've been there i know what it means for your temple to become a den of robbers i flogged people i understand listen to me jesus christ ascended to heaven with his physical body that is the proof that he's coming back if jesus christ went to heaven without his body he will still need another virgin he will still need to come back and grow he went to heaven as an adult so every condition for his return has been met the body for him to use when he's back is with him now this is what gives us confidence so when we say that jesus is coming we are not preaching a christian's gospel it is true the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father and the bible lets us know that a time will come we will hear of that loud trumpet it says to comfort one another is the return of jesus christ is not supposed to be a scary event no the return of jesus christ is an event that we should look forward to with passion and with joy the glorious reconnection someday whether we like it or not this life will fold like a curtain listen to me one glorious morning we'll wake up wanting to do our thing as always and suddenly it will happen listen it will not happen the way movies told you it will happen they didn't read the bible well it will be so fast the bible says like the twinkling of an eye before you know it there will be a mass disappearance of people you come to me for counseling you won't find me I'm gone. yes sir the fact that you are there is a sign that when i make the altar call you should run and come let me tell you this the moment there is that glorious exodus you will see people run to church in confusion the bible you will leave behind people will run and hold it and say what is happening the bible will suddenly become a bestseller it will be the most accurate road map from thence no other book no other thing will matter and we'll meet with him and we'll say savior we believed you and we spent our life making the world know listen the issue of the gospel is not a task of an evangelist alone you have to understand this this is why we labor day and night to see that this glorious gospel the global harvest because a day is coming whether you like it or not jesus christ will return and the bible says the remainder of the harvest together as a family that would be the unleashing of catastrophe on earth catastrophe that will make saddam hussein look like an angel what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing but your assignment now is to believe that he died 
your assignment is to believe that when he went to hell he went there for you please listen to what i'm telling you regardless who you are regardless what religion and for those of you who are watching me from all around the world i respect your spiritual convictions but what you are hearing is not an opinion of a religion a day will come everybody will believe everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late so when we celebrate easter yes eat the chicken eat celebrate with people but let there be a consciousness if jesus is not savior if jesus is not lord if jesus is not king there is nothing to celebrate and then if that has happened to you then you must ask yourself am i fulfilling the other part because he says on the strength of this consciousness go and there are many ways to go there are those who go physically and labor in the vineyard there are those who finance them as they go they trust god for grace and they communicate resources don't don't please feel at ease i'm not raising any money at all we love god and we fear god but let me tell you sincerely what gives value to these mundane things that we pursue on earth is to what degree it contributes to kingdom come no matter what you have if there is no bearing if there is nothing in it whether it's a political position business family education certificate i respect your pedigree but if there is nothing in your achievement that is contributing to this goye mission i assure you you are not being part of god's program not everybody will be a pastor an apostle an evangelist but the consciousness of the global harvest this is not a church affair oh how that the father's heart bleeds every day where are the men and the women where are those who will go where are those who will make this happen can i tell you this there are over we're getting close to eight billion people on earth and only about 2.6 if i'm not mistaken are professing christians that that's including those who don't know what they are doing all together just from a statistical point now i'm saying it sincerely look up that's a serious issue we keep teaching and saying one day jesus will come do you not know that scripture declares that his coming is tied to our seriousness over the global harvest why will jesus come for only 2.6 million billion people what happens to the remaining what happens to your uncle what happens to your auntie it is painful to stand at the shores of eternity and see someone you so love at the other side brothers and sisters hear me i bring you a very powerful easter message before i minister for a few minutes and we're done if we remove jesus out of the question everything we're doing we can teach kingdom that's wonderful i shared with them in lagos and i said any other thing you, if you worship the four living creatures it's still idolatry if you worship the throne it's still idolatry if you worship the 24 elders it's still idolatry if you worship heaven it's still idolatry you worship anointing it's still idolatry you worship a man of god it's still idolatry for there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved The consciousness of the global harvest is gradually eroding our minds. The local assembly is supposed to be the receiving place for souls that are won. So that they now be matured and grounded. Are we together now? Yes. Church came because of the harvest. That means that people are saved and they are brought to church then they are matured they are mentored through the ministry of the fivefold they now mature they experience the victory of christ themselves then among the many other things they are involved with they now go back 
and also become part of the team that makes that global harvest happen. Some of you here, God has trusted you with wealth. Understand the purpose of it. Some of you, God has trusted you with tremendous influence. Understand the purpose of it. Some of you, God has trusted you with all kinds of political strength. Understand the purpose of it. Some of you, God has trusted you with business acumen. You are veterans in business. Understand the purpose of it. Nothing finds its meaning outside of thy kingdom come project. It is this global harvest that gives credence to everything. So if you are praying, Lord, give me prosperity. You are praying with respect to kingdom. Lord, give me a political position with respect to kingdom. God is only interested in how what you are asking for will contribute to kingdom come. Up from the grave, the hymn says, he arose with the mighty triumph over his foe. The Bible says he arose the victor from the dark domain. And he lives forever together with his saints to reign. Scripture declares Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus. He told us that today we have been raised up with Christ. Jesus is no longer the only begotten. He's now the firstborn of we the begotten. Beloved of the Father. What is the implication of this? That number one, we have peace with God. Number two, we are now one with Christ. The Bible says so. Listen, the Bible says so. Your oneness with Christ is the basis of your authority, is the basis of the spiritual power that comes upon your life. You become a blessing when you understand you are one with Christ. These hands are ordinary hands, but not when you walk with the consciousness that I am one with Christ. Then the ordinary hands become supernatural. These lips are ordinary lips of clay, but not when you are one with Jesus. They become supernatural. Literally, the reality of the divine life comes from the consciousness of your oneness. And the Bible says, he that is joined to the spirit of God is one spirit. It's a salt covenant, inseparable. Are we blessed? Dominion is now restored. Creation should listen to you. It should submit to the sovereign grace that has been placed upon your life. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I bring you a real message of hope and a message of power. Jesus is the center and the focal point of the Christian's pursuit. Jesus, not ministry. We will teach other aspects of the kingdom life as a tool for maturing the saints. But tonight, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Listen, return back home with this consciousness. Gather your children together and tell them, look, I gave you money, I gave you education, but I need to present Jesus. He died and he rose. Today he is alive. I believe in Jesus. This is why we do the things that we do. To see that we become contributors to this global harvest. is the reason why we trust him for greater levels of his grace. So the sick can be healed. So that the 
every miracle every manifestation of the miraculous is not just promoting the man of god it's not just promoting the ministry there is a message behind it jesus is lord enthroned so whilst we begin to pray and god starts changing people's lives some of you overnight it will do you like a dream that a captivity of years will suddenly fade away this time listen don't just celebrate the miracle read the letter that that miracle brought i am lord exalted reminds me of my encounter with the lord jesus christ it remains ever fresh it's an encounter that never fades that face that i saw you can look at it for the rest of your life and not be tired it's not like men that i look at your shoe i look at this i'm tired no i'm about to make an altar call and then we'll pray this resurrection day you should not walk back with the chains that came with you because it is true that he's risen the resurrection is what gave us justification now that we are justified we have access to all the dimensions of grace the bible says let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need are we together i know that there are people here you sang thank god for the brilliant worship team and all the mighty things that had happened here but you are in this auditorium thousands of you you are outside all of the overflows down the thousands of people following from around the world we must get to the point where we make jesus the desire of nations not just ministry jesus we must make jesus become the the focal point in this city wherever you are do not allow this significant day to pass whilst you're seated inside and outside the spirit of the living god is talking to you and he's saying you need jesus not just as a religious experience now probably there are some of you you once gave your life to jesus but right now looking at your life you know that you need to come to him again aside from those here at the balcony every other overflow i would request when i make the call that you just walk to your projector screen and then those outside too those online you can follow very carefully i'm going to count one to five and i want you to leave your seat sincerely if you're saying apostle i need jesus as a matter of life i'm not pretending it he will win that war no matter where you are no man condemns you this is home come one Two, keep coming, celebrate them as they come. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame. When you died and rose again, now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my God. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died. to set me free so I lift my voice to you Jesus is still calling people 
Don't sit back and say we came. There are so many people and I'm ashamed. No, leave your seat and come. Celebrate them as they come outside. All the overflows down. Those following online from the US to Europe to Asia, all over the world. He calls you today. This is the greatest gift we can give His Majesty to celebrate this day. Someday when we stand before him, we will see everyone who is out here. And we will rejoice. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing. Don't let the devil condemn you. This is home. You are not coming to a funeral. This is where you exchange your weakness for his strength. This is where you exchange your limitations. This is where you exchange every cost for his strength. Hallelujah. Let's take it down. You know, I'm looking at an adorable baby here that came with her mother, and I almost feel like just grabbing that lady to lift her up. I've got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message unto you I bring. It is recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look and leave. Sing it with me. Look and leave. My brother, leave. Look to Jesus. Right and leave. We've got the message from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's only that you do. The Bible declares, For God so loved the world that he gave then his one and only begotten. Today he's the firstborn of we the begotten. To the end that whosoever believes in him. The Bible says he should not perish, but have everlasting life. I thank you for the courage to come. It takes a lot of courage. Please lift your right hand with me as high as you can to the heavens. Jesus is standing here. I want you to make this declaration. Let it be from the depth of your heart and let it be in truth. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You're before Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus thank you for your death thank you for your resurrection tonight i have heard your word and i declare that i love you with all my heart i declare according to the authority of scripture that jesus from today and forever is my lord my savior and my king i declare that from today i walk in victory satan take your hands away from my life he's hearing you say it again satan take your hands from my life i declare that i am a child of god i go for whatever and backward never amen and amen. amen praise the name of the lord father as a trophy of honor we present to you these souls it is a joy to see them come to become part of this global family and lord we thank you because no man comes to you except you draw them the eloquence of a preacher cannot draw people. It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you will keep them. I commend them to the ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the Word. I declare that you walk in the newness of life from today. In the name of Jesus. 
Now, very quickly, this is what I want you to do. There's someone waving the placard. There's a counselor there. Please, I will request all of you in concert, just follow the counselor, the placard. They'll just have your details very quickly and you'll return to your seat. Can we honor them as they go? Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Celebrate them. from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching